Solved Unsolved Mysteries, who was Alex Cooper? In 1987, Alex was 65 years old, and this was his wife, Margaret. They lived in Cranbrook, British Columbia. He was an accomplished musician. He had five kids, a bunch of grandkids, and everybody liked him. He had originally been in a cleaning industry, and then in 1986, he became a traveling salesman. Which brings us to April 4th, 1987, when his daughter Layla and her husband Pete were traveling out of Cranbrook, and they saw his car near a bridge. Layla and Pete just assumed that he was probably going fishing, so they walked down to the river to look for him, and they couldn't find him. So they contacted mom, Margaret, and she said she hadn't heard from him in the last 24 hours. They checked the hospital, and when they couldn't find him, they called the police. The police were equally perplexed because there were no footprints anywhere around his car that would match any of his shoes, and his clothes and his fishing gear were still inside of the car. The one thing they were able to deduce was that he had been to a diner recently, and Margaret was worried that because he refused to use credit cards or debit cards, someone had seen him walking around with a big pile of cash. Layla was more realistic, and she thought that maybe her dad had simply had a heart attack and fallen into the river. This was big news in Cranbrook, and only one witness came forward, a lady saying that she had seen him hitchhiking out of Cranbrook. His family was not on board with that concept. Nothing happened for a year, and they requested his death certificate. And that's when Margaret discovered that Alex Cooper didn't exist before the year that they got married in 1952. He had no medical history, no high school transcripts, nothing. The police were like, well, yeah, he seems like he's obviously running from something. And for four years, nothing happened with the case. But then, on May 27, 1991, things got a little weirder. Across the country in Toronto, a man by the name of David Cooper went missing, and he looked a lot like Alex. He'd been living in a boarding house and selling meat to people over the phone, and he'd been gone for too long, so one of his contacts actually reported him missing. The police did the full shebang, dusted for fingerprints. This was obviously the same guy, but they couldn't find him. Two days later, he returned to the boarding house, saw that everything was a mess, and he immediately dipped town. The police were like, listen, obviously David Alex doesn't want to be found. We're going to leave this alone. But Margaret didn't let it go, and his case aired on September 25th, 1991 on Unsolved Mysteries. And a viewer in Hamilton, Canada was like, oh, I know that guy. He lives down the street. January 10th, 1992, he finally met with the police, and he told them his real name, Albin Arsene Arsenault. See, in 1948, when he was 26, he had been falsely accused of robbing the shop that he worked for, and he skipped town. He was so busy running away that he didn't even know that the charges had been dropped against him. Then he met Margaret, got married, decided to have a life, and just never changed. The reason why he'd run away this time was that at 65, you could collect a pension, and you had to get a birth certificate and prove who you were. And he knew his lies were going to come out, so he ran again. He returned to Cranbrook, and Margaret actually said, screw it, let's just be happy together. Unfortunately, they only had four more years together because she passed away in 1996.